Edge Mobility is a company founded by six shareholders, a bit more than one year ago. We have um, expertise from the gas business, we have Linden and Aliquid, uh, we have expertise from the uh, oil and retail business, like uh, from OMB, Shell and Total, and we have of course Daimler, the car manufacturers. They founded the company um, to um, solve the so-called hand and egg problem, uh, to build the infrastructure for the cars of the future. I would talk about three advantages. So first um, is zero emissions. If you use hydrogen um, to store energy to power a vehicle, and you can think of it as an equivalent to a battery, for instance, uh, to store electricity for a battery electric vehicle or diesel uh, for a conventional car. So if you use hydrogen, um, you have zero emissions because the fuel cell in the car translates it to electricity and this powers, again, the engine of the car. Um, <coughs> second, it's very convenient for the customer because uh, you refill your car in uh, three minutes actually, pretty much like you do today with your diesel or gasoline car. The third big thing for me is that if we use hydrogen, then it's actually quite an evolutionary change uh, we, we, are, we are envisaging. Because you can use a lot of assets which you use today also in a future with hydrogen. For instance, gas pipelines you can use to store uh, hydrogen or the refilling stations you can use to refill cars. Mm -hmm. And this is another big thing. The, the key point is really um, that we, uh, the collaboration with, with our partners. Yeah? Um, we have companies who manufacture the, the HRS, we have uh, governments who fund it in part to kickstart the whole thing, and uh, we have many different people actually working on the project. To so bring them together, um, to align um, what everybody needs to do uh, is an important foundation to make it happen. Um, second, it's very important that we work closely with governments because in the beginning it's not, or it's actually quite far from being a business for the involved companies. So we need a kickstart as well from the, uh, from the policy makers. And third, um, it's of course paramount that the cars actually uh, are there yeah? mm -hmm. and then the car manufacturers start selling cars which inspire the, the customer and uh, which are come also at an affordable uh, price for the customer. And uh, regarding that uh, third point, I very much uh, welcome the news from last week from Daimler, who actually announced that uh, they will bring the, the GLC, the new uh, Gelinde Wagen, uh, from next year on. Well, in my previous jobs in sales and marketing, I, I, I learned that um, you can't convince a customer and the public in a sense that you uh, talk to a customer and use rational arguments and convince him that it's actually a good thing for the greater benefit of the society, whatever. So what we need is um, to convince customers by uh, cars which inspire and cars which come at a competitive price. Uh, this is something which convinces customer. And my part um, will be to, um, to deliver a functioning infrastructure, which is of course the other side of the coin, uh, which needs to work. So when it comes to markets and progress, I think um, three markets are most advanced, namely Germany and California and Japan. They are applying a bit different methods sometimes, but they are at a similar stage. And Germany is a big car market and um, there are very strong and innovative car manufacturers. And uh, this is needed uh, to make it happen. And um, Thirdly, I would mention that Germany is quite advanced in um, being very conscious uh, about the necessity of having the energy t transition and uh, actively shaping it. And uh, here I'm talking about uh, policy makers uh, who are of course a very uh, important part of the equation uh, to make it happen. On European level we are connected through some European uh, projects coordinated by the European Commission and I see some very good progress also happening in, in other countries. Um, just two weeks ago I spoke to the French colleagues, they have a plan uh, which will bring them I think in the next five to ten years to a very tangible progress as well. Denmark has a, a, a network of uh, ten hydrogen refueling stations, so there's actually happening a lot currently. I mean for the uh, oil and gas companies it's basically um, the, the next step to continue their business during the energy transition because I mean what the, the governments all over the world and societies are trying is actually to to uh, find a way to go from uh, the current heavy use of uh, carbon uh, based resources to a more carbon free uh, usage of resources and uh, during this journey um, 
the, the part of the uh, oil and gas companies is to find a way uh, to make it happen to refill uh, cars in a more environmentally friendly way and hydrogen is uh, there very convenient because as I said from a society perspective and from a oil and gas company perspective the assets are there yeah? you can just use them and uh, convert them to uh, hydrogen assets.